Hey everyone, welcome to another Pollock Academy. Today we're going to talk about the second wave of immigration, the immigrant experience, and just how are immigrants going to adjust to life in America. Remember the 40 years that we're covering in the back part of this unit are from 1880 to 1920. And in these 40 years we're going to see a second wave of immigration. Remember the People of the Plains video? The first wave? Well now we're on the second, where 20 million arrive here in America. Immigrants were arriving to America on both coasts. We saw Ellis Island on the east coast and Angel Island on the west coast. Ellis Island is located in New York Harbor, in between New York City and New Jersey, right next to the familiar Statue of Liberty. This is where a majority of European immigrants arrived in America. And by 1880, we see more immigrants coming from Eastern and Southern Europe, countries like Italy, Poland, Greece, and Austria-Hungary. And Angel Island was located in San Francisco, California. And this is where one million Asian immigrants came into America. These were people from China, Japan, Korea, the Philippines, and Southern India. Now, why were they coming to America? You have to remember, America was still a relatively new country at the time, and we were founded on the theme of freedom, life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Yeah, some fled Europe for religious reasons or famine, but a lot of it was about jobs. There were so many jobs available, especially during this time when America was growing and expanding faster than ever, and this new country seemed like a good opportunity to make some money. Let's take a short pause to talk about the immigrant experience. Now, we know where they came from, right? You either came from Europe, like my friends here at Ellis Island, or you came from Asia on the West Coast through Angel Island. But what was it like once you got here? And that's all part of the immigrant experience. Take a look at this slide right here. Being an immigrant was tough. You probably didn't have a lot of money. You probably spent all your money coming over here. Okay? You probably didn't speak a lot of English, and you really didn't know too many people originally. And once you got here, it was a long road ahead. Okay, you were often subject to racism and discrimination, and the jobs that were available were in factories, and they were often long hours and low pay, dangerous and unsanitary. But how are immigrants going to make a life here in America? Well, there is one solution, and that's what the second part of this video is about, Jane Addams and the settlement houses. Settlement houses popped up in urban areas during the late 1800s, and these houses were designed to help immigrants adjust to a new life in America. And you're going to see that these settlement houses tried to do everything to try to help an immigrant new to America. And I know what you're thinking. This kind of sounds like the Freedmen's Bureau. And you're right. Think of it as the Freedmen's Bureau, but for immigrants. By far the most famous and successful settlement house was the Hull House in Chicago, founded by Jane Addams. Jane Addams set up the Hull House in 1889 in a rough part of Chicago. Look at this quote. Ugh, that's gross. But this Hull House complex was massive, and it was where an immigrant could arrive in Chicago and know to go to the Hull House to acquire services to help ease into a new life in America. Some of the most popular services included English classes, art and theater classes, and sports teams. Look at this basketball team. Basketball was just invented in 1891. A lot of Jane Addams programs revolved around education, recreation, and creativity. Here's a list of other things you could do at Jane Addams' Hull House. We got job skills training, we got cooking classes, we got social clubs, we got ethnic celebrations, we got public baths, we got everything. Jane Addams and her settlement house ideas spread all over the country. Let's look at the Pillsbury House in Minneapolis, Minnesota. Yes, that same Pillsbury family. This family used their money to sponsor a house for immigrants to take classes, go on field trips, and play recreational sports. By the early 1900s, we see settlement houses make their way south. Let's look at three in our area. We have the Locust Street Settlement in Hampton for African American girls. We have the Neighborhood House in Richmond for the Jewish community. And here in Portsmouth, we had the Wesley House, which was designed to help the local Tidewater Knitting Mill factory and their children. Speaking of children, I almost forgot to mention, Jane Addams' Hull House had activities aimed at changing the lives of children. First, she helped popularize kindergarten nationwide. Kindergarten began in Germany, and literally the word means child garden, like raising a child in a garden. Do you get it? Next, Jane Addams realized that these overcrowded, dirty cities needed open space for people to enjoy, and the Hull House had an early playground and park for citizens to use and get fresh air. So what's the bigger picture here? Well, for one, the settlement house idea is still alive and well in America. Think about our community. Don't we have the same things as the settlement house? We have public schools and public recreation. We have parks and hiking trails. We have community centers and a community health center. We have these things that our local and state government supports to make our lives better as citizens. And the bigger picture with immigration is, well, we're a nation of immigrants. It would take forever to list every single contribution that immigration has brought to America. But we see in the 1800s, when immigrants arrived to America, even though there were tough times, these immigrant groups settled, persevered, and brought their traditions here to America. 
some of the fun ones I like to mention are, have you decorated your Christmas tree yet? Well, that tradition comes from Germany. Have you ever had a pierogi, a traditional Polish dish? Eh, maybe not, but I'm sure you've had pizza, a traditional dish of Naples, Italy, brought to New York City in 1905 by Gennaro Lombardi. And there it was, Pollock Academy, The Immigrant Experience.